Instead of getting a summer job, I have spent last two months building the perfect leg for my robot dog. And after 200 hours of engineering, it's finally finished. It's fast and extremely lightweight. It can jump, ride a skateboard, and my dog is absolutely terrified of it. Yeah, we'll get to that. You see, this isn't my first time making this like. It all started two months ago when I decided I'm not gonna get a job and be a YouTube engineer instead. My first version was a piece of shit. I'm pretty sure it had Parkinson's disease. I also burned down the electronics. Second version, much better. I moved the motors outside of the joints so it had low inertia and move faster. Super lightweight, it was even able to jump, but it lacked rigidity. Third version, I just made as rigid as possible. Unfortunately, it ended up being too heavy and slow, which meant I had to remodel the whole leg. I just finished modeling, hopefully the final version of this leg. Basically took the latest design, made it smaller, remodeled a bunch of parts. So now I'm going to assemble it and let's hope it's rigid enough. I started off by cutting up some carbon fiber tubes. And I'm using some water, that's just because I don't want to breathe in the carbon fiber dust, which is harmful. After that, I got to the main assembly. And as I said before, the main idea behind this new design is taking the latest design and making it smaller, lighter, but keeping the rigidity, which is quite a challenge. I did this mainly by decreasing the diameter of the tubes. And that's not because of the tubes. The tubes actually weigh next to nothing. I think it's 20 grams for the whole leg. The reason I decrease the diameter is so that I can make all the 3D printed parts smaller, which are the majority of the weight. As for the joints, each rubble joints consists of an M3 bolt and a spacer. The spacer has a diameter of 3.1 mm, which is close to the 3 mm diameter of the bolts, so there's very little backlash. And since it's made out of metal, the joints should last a decent amount of time. The M3 spacers are just press fitted into the 3D printed parts, but I had to use hammer for most of the fits. For the material, I'm printing everything from PLA Pro. It's better than regular PLA because it's got a higher impact strength, higher tensile strength, and in my experience, it's a bit more ductile, so it doesn't crack as easily. I got this filament from my sponsor Inslogic. They actually do lab tests for their filaments, so you can get the parameters like the tensile strength, shore hardness and stuff like that. Otherwise they do engineering grade filaments, so if you want TPU90A or carbon fiber infused filament, I'm gonna link them in the description and you can check them out. The leg was strong enough to hold up its own weight, so I decided I'm gonna add some payload to account for the weight of the robot. I was doing some calculations to decide which payload this leg needs to withstand. So this leg weighs 260 grams. I plan on adding a third motor, so if I just add 50%, the leg should weigh 400 grams. Then for the body of the robot, I assume that the printed parts, the tubes, it's going to weigh about 200 grams. The battery is 250. I might add some buck converters, which are 70 grams each. So the total weight of the body is going to be 500 grams. Four legs plus the body, the robot should weigh 2.1 kg. Since the robot is going to walk such that two legs are touching the ground at the same time, if I divide the body weight by two, I get the weight per leg, which is about one kilogram. It already weighs 260, so I just need this leg to lift 750 grams. If I look at my hexapod robot, each leg needed to lift about 1.5 kilograms, and the dimensions are about the same. When the hexapod was walking, it didn't really lift its body weight, and what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to actively lift the weight up and down. Since my robot dog is gonna walk just like the hexapod, I decided I don't need the full 750 grams of payload and I decided to shoot for 500 grams, which is still lower than what I had. To increase the payload of the leg, I got two main options. I can shorten the carbon fiber tubes, but this would make the robot smaller. So I decided to go with the second option first, which is adding a spring to offset the weight of the robot. If you're wondering why I added two springs in series instead of just one spring, when you try to compress the spring, you can't really do it. But if you got two springs in series, they just collapse like this. The leg can jump, which is good. Oh wow. Before this leg could lift 300 grams, now it's able to lift 500. So these two springs added 200 grams to the payload. To increase the payload further, I could have shortened the tubes, but I decided not to. 
I have basically two main reasons why I want the robot to be big. I want to scare people with it, so that's one thing. I want this robot to be able to walk upstairs, and the stairs are quite tall. And the third reason is I want the robot to be as fast as possible, because it's more fun. Uh, I'm going to build the whole robot, and then if I see that the motors are too weak, I'm just going to make these lengths shorter. Yeah, I also want to test if the whole robot is going to be able to jump. When I want the robot to jump, all four legs are going to be touching the ground. That's two kilograms divided by four, which is 500 grams. So I just need to add 250 grams. <laughs> if you like building robots, you should check out my sponsor, PCBWay. With PCBs, you can take all of these wires, components, and compress them into a single circuit board. Just like this one I used for my hexapod. In my next video, I will actually be getting a PCB for this robot dock, and PCBWay makes this process easy. You just choose the board dimensions, number of layers, and color. Like this purple one you can get for free this September. Then you upload your Gerbil files and track the manufacturing process in real time. You can also choose their PCB assembly services, which is what I plan to do because soldering sucks. So thank you PCBWay for allowing me to make these projects. I can't wait to see this robot run. At this point I decided that the 2 degree of freedom lag is finished, so I just did some final touches to make sure every part is decent and I don't have to remake it 4 times once I build the whole robot. Now I'm at the point where I think the design is decent. There is no obvious way to make significant improvements. I think I can finally go ahead and add the third degree of freedom. To add the third servo motor, I printed this elegant part. It's a servo hub that houses two servo motors just like before, and the third motor is actually gonna be attached perpendicular to them. The whole servo hub needs to rotate, so I used a spacer with an M3 bolt again. I even got to use this tool which I never use. So this is just a screw, it gets screwed in through this part and it sticks out into the spacer that's inside this part. Oh yeah, this looks super cool. If you're wondering how I made these parts look like they're made out of carbon fiber, I actually got this plate, Bamboo Lab carbon fiber, I typed that into AliExpress and it makes this nice pattern. So I was just mounting these servo motors and noticed a potential issue. Right now the bolts aren't tightened all the way and you can see that the servo can flop around a lot. And that's because of these bolts. So I decided I'm gonna use bolts with a countersunk head. This should help the servo to self-center. And now it's perfectly aligned. By the way, these gaps between the servo motors are for passive air cooling since the motors get hot. So I just printed hopefully the final version of the servo hub and as I'm disassembling the leg, I can finally feel the spring force without the gearbox of this servo slowing it down. It's pretty cool. Alright, now I want to show you the cable management I came up with because I think it's pretty sick. As you can see, the servo hub went through many iterations. At first I had no cable management, then I added this hook for servo 2. Then I added it for Servo 1 as well. And then I changed the design to like these buttons. And now it finally works. So you just press the cable in like this and then you twist it into place. And now all the cables come straight up. Again, now I want to actually make this thing move. So for that, I need to solve inverse kinematics. So I'm gonna do that on paper and then transfer it to code. There's two main ways to control this leg. You can either control the joint angles, this is called forward kinematics, that way the foot moves in an arc, or you can control the foot position, so you choose the X, Y, Z position and the leg will move there. With inverse kinematics you can do cool stuff like making the foot move in a straight line, but this comes at a cost. You need to solve a shit ton of equations. I'm gonna spare you the details, but if you want to see how to derive the equations and implement them in code, I'm gonna post that on my second channel. Yeah, if this goes right, I'm gonna be shocked. Holy shit. Yeah, it fucking works. Let's go. I did all of this first try. My high school math teacher would be proud. If you want to support me or just build this like, I'm gonna put the project files on my Patreon.
Now I want to check the lifting capability of this leg. The leg itself weighs about 400 grams. As a weight, I'm gonna use this dodecahedron I casted from aluminum about three years ago. Also about 400 grams. And it can lift it quite comfortably. I really like that you can just take the whole leg out with three bolts. This mechanism is quite elegant, I think. The three heavy servo motors are positioned in this servo hub. The rest of the parts are made out of just plastic carbon fiber tube, so it's really lightweight. Oh shit, 340 grams only. Each servo motor weighs 70 grams times three motors. That's 210 grams. All the 3D printed parts, the carbon fiber tubes, weigh 140 grams. So 60% of this leg is just the motors and 40% is this mechanism, which I think is pretty good. I was pretty happy with this leg design, so I decided to make it walk. So I just finished coding the step trajectory and it works pretty well. The bottom of the step is just a straight line. The top part is a cosine wave and this whole leg path is made out of a bunch of points generated by my code in 5mm increments. Do like follow this path by moving from point to point with some delay to regulate the speed. So I was watching YouTube and I found this guy called Noeg Ponto. To test the lack of his exapod, he attached it to a skateboard and let it push around. I want to do the same thing. This guy printed some bars and used a string to attach it to the skateboard. I actually studied mechanical engineering, so I'm gonna use some duct tape. No, no, zůstaň. No, zůstaň. No, šikovná, zůstaň. No, počkej. Počkej, Ryan, pojď sem. Pojď sem. Ček, to je skateboard. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support me, you can do that on Patreon and you will also get the files for this like. Next video is probably going to be in my master thesis since I'm behind on that shit.